Hello everyone, this is Mirzai from Kalpawe Pomona and in this lesson we are going to learn how to write the dual programming problem of a linear programming problem. In the previous video we showed how the relationship between dual and primal problem works. We saw that for a primal problem shown on the screen your dual programming is going to be on the right hand side. In this video, we are focused on writing this dual programming without going through those intermediate steps discussed earlier. The first step to learn how to write this dual programming problem directly from the given primal is to be familiar with the definition of normal maximization problem and normal minimization problem. A normal maximization problem is a linear programming problem where all the constraints are less than or equal to some right-hand side. And a normal minimization problem is an LP where all the constraints are greater than or equal to some right-hand side. The importance of this is that if you have a normal max problem, its dual is always going to be a normal min. And if you have a normal min, its dual is going to be a normal max problem. Now let's look at the relationship between the equations of the primal and dual. If I write the coefficient of decision variables in the constraint in a matrix format, this is what we get. And now let's take a look at the matrix format of the equations in the constraints in the second or dual programming. As you see, if the matrix of the coefficient in the primal problem is called A, the coefficient of decision variables in the dual programming problem is the transpose of primal problem. Now, if you look at the objective function coefficient in the primal problem, you see that they are moved to the right-hand side of the constraints. Also, the right-hand sides of the primal problem has become the objective function coefficient of your dual programming problem. In addition, your max problem has become a min problem. So if your primal is a max, your dual becomes a min. So in summary, you notice that you have to write the coefficient of the constraints and transpose them to get the coefficient of variables and the constraints of dual. Max becomes min, right-hand side becomes coefficient of objective function, and coefficient of objective function becomes the right-hand side in your dual programming problem. Using this relationship, we can write the dual directly given the primal. Now let's write this relationship here. So if your primal is a normal max, your dual becomes normal min. If your primal is normal min, your dual becomes normal max. So it's a two-way relationship. If your matrix of technological coefficient is A, the dual technological coefficient matrix is A transpose. Your objective function coefficient in the primal becomes your right-hand side in the dual, and the right-hand side of primal becomes objective function coefficient of dual. The number of decision variables in the primal becomes the number of constraints in the dual, and also number of constraints in the primal becomes the number of decision variables in the dual. We were not able to see these last two relationships very obviously because we had two decision variables, two constraints, so it was hard to see that relationship. But in the next example that we cover, we see that exchange more obviously. So let's take a look at the example 7 one of your textbook. This is the linear programming problem given in example 7 one. Now to write the dual programming of this linear programming problem, first we have to make sure it's a, a normal min problem. So in a normal min problem, everything should be greater than or equal. So if I look at these constraints, the first one is not in the normal form, so I have to multiply it by a negative 1 so that it turns into a greater than or equal constraint. If I do that, this is a new LP that I get where everything is greater than or equal in the constraints. So now I can write a normal max problem for this min problem as its dual programming. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we want to do, write the matrix of the coefficient in the constraints. And if I transpose that, I'm going to get the matrix of coefficient in, in my dual problem. Now remember that the number of constraints in the primal becomes the number of decision variables uh, in the dual. So in the primal we have two constraints. Now it means that we're going to have two decision variables in my dual programming. So that's why you only have y1 and y2. So let's go ahead and make that multiplication and write the equation. So if I do this multiplication here, these are the set of equation that I get. Now the next thing is we are writing the dual for a min problem, so it's going to be a normal max problem. 
So for the objective function, the coefficient comes from the right-hand side. So I have to write it as w is equal to negative 51y1 plus 24y2. Now, because it's a max problem and it's going to be normal, everything should be less than or equal in the constraints. So you're going to have all these constraints less than or equal. The right-hand side here comes from your objective function coefficient. So I'm going to write them as 3, 2, and 2. Those are the coefficients that you see here. At the end, don't forget to write that y1 and y2 are greater than or equal to 0. So with this, you are done with writing your dual programming from your initial linear programming problem by normalization of the initial problem or the primal problem. Here we learned how to normalize a problem and from a normalized problem write its normalized dual. Sometimes we can skip this intermediate step. It means that you don't necessarily have to normalize to write the dual. You can directly go from here to here without the normalization. So the alternative method to write the dual LP is to skip the normalization. In this method, we define the sign of the dual constraints and variables based on primal variables and constraints. Suppose that you have a max problem. Your constraint can be greater than or equal, less than or equal, or equal. Same thing with your variables. You can have variables that are positive, negative, or unrestricted in sign. Previously, we learned how to deal with these two conditions in earlier chapters. Even though the assumption of linear programming problem always wants greater than or equal uh, sign for your variables, but sometimes we have to deal with those two other conditions. Suppose that you want to write the dual programming problem for this max problem. So if I write the dual, it's going to be a min problem. And you can define the sign of the variables based on the sign of constraint, the sign of constraint based on the sign of variables. So let's see how we can do that. If you have a max problem, less than or equal is a normal situation. So in that case, if you have a constraint that has a great, less than or equal sign, the variable associated with that is going to have the normal condition, which means it's going to be positive. However, for the other two conditions, you have to change the sign of your variable. So if your constraint is greater than or equal, your variable becomes negative. If your constraint is less than or equal, your variable has a normal condition and it's positive. If your constraint is equal, then your variable is, an unre is unrestricted in sign. Now, if your variable is greater than or equal to zero, that's the normal condition, and your constraint is going to be a normal min problem, which is greater than or equal constraint. However, if your variable is less than or equal to zero, then your constraint also is going to flip its side in comparison with the normal condition. If you have a min problem as your primal, and you have a constraint that is greater than or equal, then the associated variable in your dual is going to be greater than or equal. And if the constraint is less than or equal, the associated variable is going to be less than or equal, and so forth. So anything between dual and primal are two-way avenue. Now let's look at one example and see how we can use this relationship to skip the normalization step in writing the dual programming problem of an LP. Consider this linear programming problem. The first step is to write the equation. So previously we wrote the matrix of coefficient here and we transpose them. I want to show you an easier way. So the easier way is that for each of these constraints, associate one variable, y1 and y2. Then for each column, write one equation. So the first equation is going to be y1 multiplied by 1 plus y2 multiplied by 4. And then for second equation, you can say y1 multiplied by 3 plus y2 multiplied by 8. And for the third equation, you can write y1 multiplied by 1 plus y2 multiplied by 0. And because the 0 multiplied by y2 in the third equation can be eliminated, we can avoid writing it all together. Now I have the set of my equations here. The next step is to define the sign of the decision variables here. How did I define them? So the sign of the variables is dependent on the constraint. So you are in a min problem, right? Your primal is a min problem. The first constraint is less than or equal. So the variable associated to that should be less than or equal to zero. So that's where the first sign comes from. The second equation here is greater than or equal is greater than or equal here, the sign associated with it is normal, which is greater than or equal to zero. Basically, what you need to look here is that does this equation is in a normal 
min format because it's not then associated variable with that is going to be negative. Now this one is a normal form for a min, so therefore the variable associated with it is going to have a normal greater than or equal to zero sign. So then you have to define the sign for your constraint here, which is defined based on the sign of your variables in the primal problem. So in the primal problem, all your variables are greater than or equal to zero, and therefore your dual is going to be everything less than or equal. So let's go ahead and do that. So everything is going to be a less than or equal sign. Then you're going to write your right-hand side and objective function. For writing the right-hand side, I bring the coefficient of objective function to the right-hand side. As you see, 3 is come here, 2 is come here, and 2 here. And then I have to write the objective function, which for that I use the right-hand side of my primal problem. So now I wrote the dual programming problem of my primal without normalization. Instead of normalizing, what happened was my y1 now is less than or equal to 0. By the way, don't forget to put a max here because dual of a min problem is a max problem. Now let's do a comparison here. So from normalization and writing the dual, we got this linear programming problem. Without normalization, we got this linear programming problem. Now are these two the same? The answer is yes. Why? Because you have y1 less than or equal to 0 here. Previously, we learned that linear programming problem doesn't want a variable that is negative, and you have to change it to another variable that is positive and is the negative of this variable. So you're going to have y1 equal to negative of y prime and replace that into your equations here and also in the objective function. So if you do that, you come to this linear programming problem. So whether you normalize the primal problem and then write the dual programming or if you directly go ahead and write the dual program without writing your normalization, your answer is going to be exactly the same mathematically. However, you might find one easier than the other one. In the next video, we're going to look at another example, which include equal sign in the equation of your primal problem to add a little bit of complexity for writing a dual programming problem. If you need more example and help, I highly recommend you to watch that video. Thank you for watching.